Okay, so Google just killed RAG with the new file search in Gemini API. It's a fully managed retrieval augmented generation system with a single API call. Now you don't have to worry about building complex RAG system. All you need is just a few lines of codes where you upload your files and then you use that as a search tool in the Gemini API calls. I in fact built a whole system on top of it. You upload your files, just click create knowledge base, and then you can start chatting with your documents with full citation and all behind a simple API call. Now, this system comes with Firebase for database and Clerk for user authentication. Later in the video, I'll show you how to access this and start using it for your own projects. It's a fully managed solution. All you have to do is just upload your documents and the API take cares of the rest. But I think the best part is the pricing. So you pay only for the embeddings, depending on what embedding model that you choose. Storage is absolutely free, which is usually pretty expensive for managed retrieval augmented generation systems. And then even the query time embeddings is free. You just pay for tokens that are in the context of your LLM. And that's why I built this whole solution so that you guys can try it for yourself. Okay, so let me first walk you through the code and then I'll show you a working example. Link to that application that I built is going to be in the video description. This is part of the new Gemini uh, API. You will need to install the latest version of the Gemini SDK. There are two ways in which you can provide files. You can create files search store and you will just need to provide the name of the search store. This is basically your knowledge base or vector index. Then you need to provide a list of documents that you want to upload. Now the beauty is that you can include files successively. So once you create an index, you will be able to add or remove files to it, which is pretty awesome. And then you want to make sure that the files are uploaded. This is going to become your vector store. When you are making an API call to Gemini models, you just provide that file store as a tool. And then during generation, the Gemini model is going to use that as a vector index to retrieve context to generate responses. So this is basically this whole RAG setup, but they have wrapped it in this simple API call to make it extremely easy for you. Now they give you minimal configurations that you can set. The only thing that you can do is just define the chunk size. They do recursive chunking. Now by default it's 200 tokens chunk with an overlap of 20 tokens. But here's how the whole system works. So you upload your documents into the file storage. It will compute embeddings. This is where you actually need to pay for the embeddings that is computing. But the pricing is pretty awesome for the Google embedding models. After that, they are written into the database. Now during the retrieval time, first when you make call to the Gemini model, the model is going to decide whether it needs external knowledge or essentially it's want to use the tool or not, right? So it's more agentic in nature. If it decides to use the tool, then it is going to query the embeddings. And now you don't pay for query time embeddings. You only pay for the retrieved context that is going to be sent into the context of your Gemini model to get the final response, right? So it's a pretty neat deal, even in terms of cost as well. Now the only drawback is it really abstracts everything and you don't really have flexibility in controlling different components. But if you want to learn more about RAG in general and how these RAG systems work, I'm doing a free webinar with IBM on November 19. Details are going to be in the video description. I will teach you how to think about building retrieval augmented generation systems from basic principles and we're going to build pretty complex systems in that free webinar. You also get 300,000 tokens on Watson X. So do check out the video description for more details. Next I'm going to walk you through how I built that platform where you can actually use this new file search API. So there are two different components. First is knowledge base creation. It gives you the ability to customize the knowledge base configuration. And then you can select a specific knowledge base and start chatting with it. On a higher level, here's a quick overview. So you have 
the front facing UI that is currently hosted on Vercel. You will be able to sign up and start using it. Authentication is done through Clerk. The database and user data management is through Firebase Firestone. And then the RAG implementation is through the Gemini API. Clerk and Firebase are complementary to each other. However, you could potentially use Firebase for user authentication, but Clerk offers a lot more features. And one of them is to build multi-tenant systems where you can create organization level indexing and knowledge bases and give permission to people, which is a pretty neat feature. And that's why I'm really happy that they are also sponsoring this video. I'm going to show you an example of that later in the video. Okay, if you want to try this system, link is going to be in the video description. All you need to do is just sign in using your Gmail account. Now here you can create a custom knowledge base or start chatting with an existing knowledge base. You will have to bring your own API key. So the first thing is if you just go to create new knowledge base, let's say we try to upload a document, let's call it DeepSeek. Now the first time when you try to click on it, it's going to ask to provide your own API key. Just go to AI Studio, get your API key, make sure it's connected to a billing account because by default it's using the Gemini embedding 001 and you do need a paid account for this. But the pricing for this embedding model is really good. Okay, we're going to click continue. Now that is going to just record your API key for this session so you will actually need to upload your document again. This is a small bug that I'm going to fix when I release this video. So let's click on this. It's going to embed everything. And if you have multiple different indices, they're going to show up because all of the indices are connected to your own API key. I don't have access to your file search indices or knowledge base. Okay, so next you just click on that specific index that you created and we can ask a question. So for example, what was the total training cost of deep seek models. Okay, so I'm happy with the transcription. You also have the ability to select different Gemini models. Right now we're going to just use Gemini 2.5 flash. Now this is going to send in the request. It will make the tool call and then it also gives you the actual chunks or pages that it used, right? So there is a page number, the actual text of the chunk. In some cases you probably are going to notice that you don't see a page number with some chunks. Now this happens if the chunk is right in the middle of the page because the Gemini API doesn't keep track of text that is coming in the middle of the page. But you actually have a correct response here which is pretty neat and it's really fast as well. Depending on the tier you are on there are different limits on the total size of the project files. So for example, if you are on the free tier, you get one gigabytes tier one, that's paid tier. You can have up to 10 gigabytes. Tier two is a hundred gigabytes. And then tier three is one terabyte. But keep in mind, you're not paying for the storage cost, which is again, pretty amazing. Actually, let me show you one more feature that is in here. So I'm going to upload the DeepSeek paper plus a couple of invoices. But if you go to advanced settings, you can enable either semantic search, which is just embedding based search, keyword based search, which is something like BM25, or you can use hybrid approach, right? Uh, you also have the ability to select multiple different embeddings. And if you want, you can define your own chunk size as well. All right, so let's recreate this. Okay, so this is a new index. And now we can just click on invoices and we can ask something like, can you tell me what is the total invoice amount? Okay, let's send this in. Okay, so there are two different invoices. One is $3,000, the other one is $9,000. And I can tell you these are correct. One thing, when you sign out and sign back in, you will still have access to your chats. However, you will need to provide your API key again, and all of your previous knowledge bases are going to show up in this list. And the reason is that once you sign out, I don't have access to your API key and all of the search vector stores are actually tied to your API key. Let me show you one more neat feature and this is going to be especially useful for businesses and organizations and that is multi-tenant architecture which Clerk supports. So as an example, here's my personal account 
but then I can create an organization. And the beauty of this is that I can not only invite people to this organization, but can also give them different privileges. For example, if I have multiple different knowledge bases or indices, then I can allow them to have access to some of them. In order to build this, all you just need to do is when you create your clerk account, just copy this prompt and take it to something like cursor and cursor will be able to use this information to create multi-tenant SaaS applications for you. So for example, I'm going to just call this prompt org. We're going to create an organization. Now we can invite people. For example, I'm going to send an invitation. And now I can switch between the personal and this organization account. So here I created an index called O3. This is on organization level. And I logged into another account. You can actually see that I already have the invitation. So we're going to just join. And now within this organization, I can see my O3 index. Now here on the back end, I can see there are two people in this organization. So this is extremely powerful, especially for businesses and organizations. And the best part is you can get started for free. So even for the hosted application right now, I am using a free account, which gives you up to 10,000 monthly active users, which is pretty neat. So do check out Clerk. Details are going to be in the video description. Now, a few notes on this file search API. It's pretty awesome, especially if you're building a relatively simple rag systems. It uses a powerful model. They also do the ranking for you. However, if you're trying to build more agentic solution, then you will need to pass this on as a tool to your agent, which is possible here because even right now it's being used as a tool for more complex systems. You probably need, want to have a lot more customizations. They also gives you the ability to include some metadata. Now, one really neat feature that I personally like is that you can progressively add files to it. So for example, I can just go select a file, right? And you can include metadata here. So let's say a simple amount. And let's assume for this one, the amount is 9,000, right? So you can add metadata to individual files as well, right? And then if you click on upload file, this will just add it to the existing knowledge base. Now I haven't seen this progressive addition or deletion of files from knowledge bases. So it's a very neat feature. For example, if we remove this, it will just delete it from the knowledge base. And now you are left with only that NYS data, the deep seek related information is gone. But still in certain cases, you want to have a lot more control on not only the retrieval generation and even the verification part. In those cases, you definitely want to build a more customized solution. But in general, I will highly recommend to just start with this and see how far you can push it. Do check out my file search implementation and let me know if you find this useful. If there's interest, I will keep building this and make it a lot more agentic. And who knows, I might offer it as a solution as well. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.